this video, I'm gonna show you what happens after death according to the book, The Autobiography of a Yogi. This is a book that Steve Jobs had in his iPad. It was the only book he had in his iPad and it's the book that he read every single year the last 40 years of his life. This is a book I think is extraordinarily powerful and I'm gonna show you exactly what it says. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you one of the most powerful books I've read, which is The Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. He is coined and noted for bringing yoga to the West, from the East to the West, and kind of bridging the two philosophies. He's always uh, mentioned that he thought that the materialism of the West and the spiritual nature of the East could be merged and we could each learn from each other. And that was, in a way, his life purpose, was coming to America, showing yoga. Um, he got a degree in India, just so people would take him seriously here in the States. And the autobiography of a yogi is his first-hand account of going through the process of enlightenment, and also just many mystical, magical experiences that he had in his life. And uh, I, at first, when I started reading it, I thought it was kind of hard to read, but once I got into it, it was, it's a profound book. It resonates at a very high vibration, and I see why Steve Jobs read it every single year the last 40 years of his life. It really makes you understand as well that magic is a real thing. Like, what we think of as reality is a dream. And when you hear and see these experiences in the book that you can feel are real, you can feel that he's authentic with, with what he's sharing, and you can then see that reality is much more a cosmic dream than we thought before. So. In this video, I've actually took one of my favorite chapters. It's chapter number 43, one number away from 44, which as many of you know is my favorite number. But Sri Yukateswar, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sri Yukateswar is his guru. Uh, the one that, in a way, like helped him on his path of enlightenment. And Sri Yukateswar uh, was the one that told him eventually you're gonna go to the West, your dharma, your, you know, your purpose is to go to the West and just bring yoga to the West and go to America which back in the uh, 1920s and 30s or whenever it was around that time period, which was very out there. It's like he couldn't, you know, to come here, it took like a boat and it took a long time, took weeks to get here. Um, but told him this is what you're eventually gonna be doing and that was eventually his path. And he missed his guru and he was away. Eventually though, he was in America for uh, years and eventually his guru sent him a telepathic message, said, I don't have much longer, come back to India meaning he was about to transition um, into, into, the, uh, into the higher dimensions. You know, he was about to transition, not be on earth anymore. So uh, Paramahansa Yogananda travels all the way back to the east, meets him, spends his last couple months with him. Sri Yogeshwar passes away. Paramahansa Yogananda is very sad. And then what happens is in meditation one day, Paramahansa Yogananda is greeted by Sri Yogeshwar. He's in meditation, and he doesn't just imagine Sri Yukateswar, it's like he actually sees him. There's not a difference between what we would imagine as somebody inside like some spirit guide or something, it's he's actually in front of him, which kind of shocks Paramahansa Yogananda. He's like, what is going on here? And he's extremely excited to see Sri Yukateswar, and Sri Yukateswar then explains some things to him about what happens after death, about what the astral realms are like, about what heaven's like, all these different dimensions of existence, and he explains to him what happens. And it's the, the, the title of that, that chapter is called The Resurrection of Sri Yukateswar. And I don't know if I've said his name right, but I'm doing my best, okay, so just give it to me there. <laughs> so, what I did is I wrote down some things and I'm gonna share with you, I'm even gonna map it out a little bit because I think that when we talk about life after death with the autobiography of a yogi, it also highly correlates with the dimensions, what we understand about the third dimension, the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension. They're just used in a little bit different terms. But I'm gonna share with you what those different ways are. Now, some of the things I wanna talk about is, I kinda of took some screenshots on my iPad of some of these things. He says that the, the astral worlds, what we think of as the astral worlds, is a very beautiful place. It's like a, it's a dreamlike, beautiful, heaven-like place. The temperature is perfect 
There's not the seasons. We have seasons on earth because there's a lot of duality here on earth. There's a lot of imbalance here on earth. So we have these like, or, you know, we have the, um, the snow and stuff like that. But he says it's a very spring-like environment where it's always feels like at the perfect temperature, which also resonates with Bashar. If you ever listen to Bashar, he talks about how his planet, which is a higher fourth density planet, um, is, is like perfect temperature. It's like almost like you're in a, you're at a beach or something everywhere around the planet. There's no, there's no snow or anything like that. So this also is very in alignment with a lot of the other things that I've heard. Now, before I get too much into the astral realms and talking about these different states of consciousness, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you, they, there we go, got it. <laughs> One time I was doing that and it took me like four times to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little bit about the different bodies that he talks about because he says that every one of us has three different layers of our body so let me show you what i mean so what he says is there is the earth we all have a, what's called an earth gross body gross Ew. <laughs> and then we have that of the astral body and then we have that of what is called a causal body the causal body is the highest out of the three, the highest vibration out of three, it's the, it's the realm of ideas and thoughts. Here, I think things instantly manifest. Maybe that does it in astral realms as well. The astral body is connected to our emotions. It's connected to our emotions and when we go to bed at night, we go to the astral realm. The earth body, we can consider this, we can also consider this 3D, 4D, 5D, 5D level of consciousness. Now. This is our emotions. This one is more of our physical body. So it's our physical body. It's the things that we experience in earth. It's the, the food that we eat. It's this body. 16 hours a day, we are in our earth body. And then what happens is when we go to bed at night, we go to the astral body. The astral, our astral body is connected to our emotions. And it's connected to the astral realms. The astral realms is like a heaven-like place. Um, the astral realms is a, is a higher vibrational. In, when we go into our deepest level of sleep, we go into what is called the causal realm. This is the deep sleep that is very rejuvenating, Sri Yogacar says. And for about, I don't know how long every night, maybe it's a level of timelessness as well, but at a certain point in our night, we may go into the causal realms as well, which is deeply rejuvenating. Now, the idea is we're here most of the time. We go to bed, we're in the astral realms. This is also, he says that there's many different astral planets. There's many different astral planets depending on our vibration that we go to. After death, I don't know if also at night when we go to bed, we go to these different astral planets. I have a feeling we may. But after our death here on Earth, we go to the different astral planets that are in resonance with our vibration. So these different planets are ones that we can go to um, uh, depending on our vibration after life on Earth. And then the causal realm is beyond needing even, from what I understand, the causal realm, you barely even need a body. Everything here is just made up of light. Like everything is made up of light. There's still a sense of physicality here. Maybe like a, you still experience reality. You could still eat. There's astral ray-like vegetables they talk about. Maybe food is so good. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that what happens is food is so good or maybe your senses are so enha enhanced in the astral realms that the only thing you need to eat is like these ray-like vegetables. Like you don't need stimulating foods that we need here on earth like pizza and stuff like that. But he talks a lot about that. So there's a couple things that he says that I think is interesting as well about the different astral realms. He says that in the astral realms, after we die, what happens is we go to these astral realms that are equal to our vibration. And negative entities, people that die that are very evil, they go to the astral realms as well. But they go to an astral realm that is specifically designed for them in a way. It's a, it's a reality that is equal to them. They aren't allowed to other sides in the astral realms that they're not ready for in a way. You go to an astral realm that is equal to your vibration. So that's kind of good to know. So sometimes we may see people that are, um, maybe people that have done very evil things in their lives and, and they're not necessarily gonna go and wreak havoc in the good parts of the, the, uh, the astral realms. And there's different layers from what I understand as well. 
Sri Yukata Swar says there's different layers in the astral realms where you you have access to a certain amount of it, but it depends upon your level of spiritual progression as to which ones you experience. So what he says is that in the astral realms, after we pass away, this is what I thought is cool too. Sri Yukata Swar appeared to Yogananda as like the perfect version of Sri Yukata Swar at the age he, he loved about himself. Like most people in the astral, I've heard this from many different sources by the way, in the higher dimensions after we pass away from this physical incarnation, we get to choose what we look like and normally it's the part of our life where we were at our peak. So I might choose like this time of my life when I'm like, I feel like I'm at my peak. I feel physically just per, you know, I may, I don't know. I also, maybe when I'm older, I like, I like, I want to look like that, like with wise, with a beard, but it's like the perfect glow like version of you. So many people will be in their like mid twenties still, even though they may have died at 90 years old or a hundred years old, they may choose to be and look like they're 25 years old. And that's common in the astral realms to look that way. So it's almost like you get to look in the, in the astral realms exactly how you prefer to look and the best version of yourself. So that's, so Sri Yukatasur liked his older body. So he explains, he's like, I chose my older body because I like it and I like to be wise or I forget the exact terminology he used. But, but then what happens is, is you get to, that's the way that you show up. And on average, in the astral realms, you will be, you, you can be there 500 to 1,000 years. 500 to 1,000 years. Whereas on Earth, we live like 100 years. In the higher realms, in the astral realms, it's much longer period of time. And I don't remember if he mentions it about the causal realm, which I would consider to be the fifth dimension. But, but in general, maybe that's even longer. He says, luminous ray-like vegetables around abound in the astral soils he answered the astral beings consume vegetables and drink a nectar flowing from the glorious fountains of light and from astral books and rivers just as invisible images of persons on earth can be dug out of the ether and made visible by television apparatus later being dismissed again into space so the god created unseen astral blueprints of vegetables and plants floating in the ether are pres precipitated on a planet, astral planet by the will of its inhabitants. So it seems like there's a lot of very magical, oh, here's something else that I thought was cool. So the earth liberated astral being meets a multitude of relatives, fathers, mothers, wives, husbands, and friends acquired during different incarnations on earth as they appear from time to time in various parts of the astral realms. He is therefore at a, he or she is therefore at a loss to understand whom to love, especially he learns as the divine equal love for all. So it's like, imagine you go to this family reunion with this people of all of these different people that you don't know, that you do know, and you remember them from different incarnations and you're trying to decide who to give your love to and who to like hug and who to like embrace. The idea is that in the astral realms, once we die, we have this meeting with all these other beings that we've known, a lot of that we don't even know of right now because we're only aware of this incarnation right now, and we get to meet with them in the fourth dimension or the astral realms. And I find that to be, I find that to be really empowering. Physical death is attended by the disappearance of breath and the disintegration of freshly sails. Astral death consists of disbursement of life trons. So once we decide to, sh to shift from the astral realm into the causal realm, Whereas the physical realm is about letting go of the physical body, the astral realm has what is called life trance. This is what they use a lot in the book. It's about calling, it's called life trance. It's maybe it's some type of life force energy. So the idea is that when we pass away, we, we go to this astral realm where we have the ability to connect to many different souls. We have an ability to connect to many different people that we've had lifetimes with. And it's a very exciting time. We also get to pick the perfect body that we would want, the time of our life when we were at our peak. And we get to then go and um, show up that way. We can live 500 to 1,000 years or more. And, and more than just that, we have different, you know, when we talk about different planets, I think a lot of times different planets, higher vibrational planets, that we're all connected to, by the way. When we talk about East Tees, we talk about star seeds, we're all multidimensional beings. When we talk about these different planets, we have different opportunities to go to these different 
these different spheres, astral spheres, as Sri Yukteswar calls it, to where we can experience these different people and experience um, these different realms depending on our vibration. So, so I think that a lot of times we may say the Pleiadians, the Syrians, they may be different fourth dimensional astral realms. Maybe they're not physical in the way that we think they are. Maybe they aren't. You know, it makes me think too because Bashar always talks about his planet and he says it's, it's a different dimension. It's not a physical universe that we would see from our telescopes or anything. He says it's, a, it's slightly out of phase of our reality. Maybe it's an astral realm. I'm not sure. And they say actually as well, I've heard the raw law of one talk about how the astral realms is um, there's also like actual realities around Venus and Plu Do Jupiter and all these planets that we just can't physically see with our eyes. So we think they're just empty dead planets when in actuality they have life all over them, just life in a different dimensional interpretation in a way. That's the law of one if you've ever heard of that. Uh, so here's something else that's cool. Astral, in the fourth dimension astral realm after we pass away, communication among astral inhabitants is held entirely by astral telepathy and television. There is none of the confusion and misunderstanding of the written and spoken word which earth dwellers must endure. Just as persons on the cinema screen appear to move and act through a series of light pictures and do not actually breathe, so the astral beings walk around and work in intelligently guided and coordinated images of light without the necessity of drawing power from oxygen. So we don't even need to breathe in the astral realms. How cool is that? We don't need to breathe. We don't really need to eat, I don't think, but I think we might enjoy it. You know, I was makes me think of as well as um, Corey Good, who is like a whistleblower who has dealt with some uh, group of beings called the Blue Avians, um, talks about in detail this experience he had with them, where he goes and meets up with a whole bunch of these um, Blue Avians after some type of. Um, I don't know, this might be, it's, it's from the show Cosmic Disclosure. And basically what he says though is that with them, he ate these vegetables. They ate vegetables together at dinner. He said they were kind of bland. I don't know how that, I don't know exactly how that works. Um, but it made me think of it. It's like, yes, higher vibrational beings would eat like vegetables, you know. Um, so, so this is the different, the different perspectives of what happens after we pass away. One other thing I'll say is that he does also mention that there is a certain state of enlightenment that what you, once you reach, you can then attain a more heavenly place than anything you can imagine. It's called like Heron Loka or something like, it's some, it starts with an H. And it's this place, this, this place that you can only really go to if you're more self-realized in the, in the higher realms. And it's like this very heaven-like place that's like beyond anything you can imagine. And you have to be of that same level of vibration to experience it. Um, if you're not, then what happens is you can only experience certain realms of the fourth, the astral realms. So I found that to be interesting as well. So what, what Sri Yukteswar is doing as well now is he told Paramahansa Yogananda, what I do now is he says he helps people go from the astral realms into the causal realms. So when he was on earth, he was helping people, you know, he's enlightened, he's helping people like wake up, he's helping Paramahansa Yogananda. He was like, you know, doing his enlightened stuff. Then he passes away. Now he's helping people go from the fourth the fourth astral realm into the causal realm. He's teaching people and souls about that. So that's what he's doing. Maybe he's still there. I think that we all have the ability to uh, connect to many of these different astral beings. You know, sometimes when I meditate, I think of Paramahansa Yogananda because I, I think he, he represents a certain level of divinity that I think exists within all of us. And when it comes to this process of enlightenment, and um, I think the important thing to remember is that life is a dream. This is a fun dream that we're having, that we've forgotten who we really are. When we die, we don't really die, we change our form. When we die at the end of our life, we go, it's our physical body dies, but then we're in our astral body. And in our astral body, we can meet friends, family. We look the way that, you know, the perfect time of our life, the way that we prefer to look. Um, we eat these ray-like vegetables. We live 500 to 1,000 years. I think, honestly, every night when we go to bed and we're in the astral realms, we know this about ourselves. We just don't remember that while we're here. So when we think of death, oh my God, what day we're gonna die. It's like, it's no different than every night when you go to bed and you wake up in the astral realms. It's just that instead of coming back here, you just don't. 
So I don't know, I don't think that's as scary as we think it is. I think it is so empowering, so cool to know. I think that um, right now there's a transition on the planet where we're actually transcending into more of an astral realm right now. I think our body's going from 3D to 4D reality. So in a way where our bodies are becoming more and more light. I think that reality is made up of light and love. And the more aware we become of ourselves, the more, um, the more beneficial it is. The more self-realized we are, the more likely we are to experience a higher vibration in the astral planet. So do the self-work, learn to love. This is a school ground I think that we're on and the higher level we reach by self-love and love of everyone else by understanding everyone's a reflection and a piece of the divine, I think the better off we're gonna be. So let me know what you thought of today's video. I know it's very different than a lot of the videos I've shared before where I share that of, uh, you know, the, the autobiography of yoga. If you want me to share more from this book, let me know as well. Other than that, I will see you guys later. Peace, much love, and namaste.